Hello there, it is Dream, and today we got super lucky and pulled our girl Momo. So this video is going to be an overview of how I built her, leveled her up, ranked her, and how I plan on using her in the current meta for global. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's jump right into it. All right, let's level her up. Let's get her up there straight to 56. I hit 55 today and there was so much EXP in the 55 quest that it put me to 56. <laughs> and then for the ranks, okay. Rank one, I don't really have a preference on either of these, if I recall. Yeah, I think I think I might just save this one until I need one for like a specific strat or something. I don't plan on really using either of them anyway, so. For rank three though, uh, we are definitely getting our repulsion. Yep, our push for PvP. Uh, but I think the other one is also sick when you're doing dot, so we'll probably grab both with our Castillas. We're... We're pretty Castilla rich right now. So we will grab both builds. The dot better in PvE and uh, the push better in PvP. I mean, you can definitely abuse the push in PvE too, but... Alright, for rank 5, we are taking her strike back. Yep, okay. So, erosive force field for sure. Easy, easy. For rank 7, uh, Dark Ripple, of course a classic. Toughness is okay, but usually not worth the slot. So yeah, I think we'll we'll just take the Dark Ripple. Even though, again, I don't know how much use we'll see out of this one. Outside of specific use cases to turn off reactions and passives. Rank 9, I think both of these are good. Um, ooh, a sleep attack, but it's only 30%. So, I think I'd rather take the energy. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take the energy there. And then rank 11. This is probably one where I'm going to take both as well. Doom Awaken is the first choice, of course. It gives her her alert, extra stacks of barrier. It's super sick, it's instant. The Life Devourer... It has 150% attack with 45% lifesteal, which is a very, very good nuke. And only costs 3, so pretty spammable. Yeah, I think we're just going to Castilla both right away. Because I can definitely make use of this in the same build. So yeah. Yeah, we'll save our rank 1, but everything else I'm pretty happy with, yeah. The instant 2 investment, I think is worth it. Alright, I've had some time to make my build for my Momo, and so now I'm going to go through and explain my choices. First of all, her trait wants to get to 3 stars as soon as possible to drop the cooldown of her giving herself her barrier every turn. So you want to race to 3 stars as soon as possible. She is definitely in my memory shard team already. And uh, if you are a whale, good luck, but I definitely do not recommend anyone besides whales and leviathans go for dupes on a dual banner, because that is rough. <laughs> so, of course, we are rushing her to 3 stars. And then next, we're going to talk about the weapon and the gear build that I put her in because it makes the skill build that I chose make way more sense in that context. So for the weapon, I chose the Gazing Orb, a maxed out SR weapon that will give you 15% more damage on single target based attacks. Also comes with a pretty good amount of stats if you have it fully maxed out like this. Even in comparison to my Cornucopia staff, you can see here, it's not too far off in just raw stats. And of course, you can roll your engraving for even more. So... It's not too big of a loss dropping down from an SSR weapon to an SR weapon, as long as you're going to be making full use of that passive. So I chose the Gazing Orb on her for that single target damage. The single target damage will apply to her Strike Back, to her Alert, and then any of her single target skills that I have chosen in her build. So if you want to do the AoE version of Momo, which is kind of like more the PvE side of that, that kind of thing, then you can basically just switch this on over to the Explosive Crystal, and it changes that 15% to AoE damage. And of course, if you have access to like the legendary broom, any of that kind of stuff, then you can also make use of that on her. But yeah, so I've chosen the Gazing Orb for my current build, and uh, it is definitely a very good weapon. I don't feel like I'm like losing out from not having stolen like this, um, this Starry Sky Heritage from Simona. And then over onto her Trinket. This is a Trinket that I basically was like, damn, I'm never going to touch this until I pull Momo. And then here we are <laughs> having pulled Momo. And so 
When alert is triggered, deal 5% more damage. However, if a foe uses a skill within the range of your alert, it'll also cause your alert to be triggered. So not only is this buffing her alert damage, but it is also making so that anybody who walks into her alert gets hit, and anyone who's already standing in her range when she starts it, but chooses to use a skill on either her or some of her allies in that range, they are also still gonna get punished all the same. This makes her alert skill in PvP absolutely disgusting. You can also abuse this in PvE, but like I said, in PvP, if you're using someone to like cover her, shift her around, she's behind a frontline wall, it's gonna make her and your entire team that's grouped up like that very, very annoying to approach and make them think about how they need to pick it apart a lot more strategically than just like running up and just AOing down everything because they will get Omega punished for doing that. So the Hunter's Intuition is basically made for Momo. This is a very, very sick thing on her. And you can see the engraving that I chose for uh, for this build is a uh, double staff. And so every single time you use a basic attack, a skill, a strike back, an assisting attack, you will gain a random level two attribute buff. So this is going to be very, very easy to proc if you are using her alert. If she's getting hit by melee damage, she's also gonna proc it. And then of course, if you are just getting your energy back by using your basic skill, using like your invigorating strike, or even going for a sleep on someone if you pick hypnotic, then you are also triggering a random level two buff on you, which is going to be huge once you start stacking those up on yourself, especially if you proc the magic attack one, you are going to turn into an absolute monster with your alert strike back. And of course, since we've been talking about the off turn damage this entire time, destruction of the tower is going to be amazing on her. I unfortunately only got one magic attack line on it, but I did roll the extra unique line on here for 40% lifesteal when it's not your turn, making her alert skill even more devastating to try to get past because this 40% lifesteal will stack alongside the 40% lifesteal that she already gets, or sorry, the 50% lifesteal that she already gets from her alert skill. So you can see here, Doom Awaken is a buff that gives you 20% attack, grants you 50% lifesteal, and allows you to attack with alert three times in a three tower radius per turn. This is an absolute wall that you are making where anyone who chooses to get in range of damaging your units or you is going to pay the absolute price with their HP pools. They're always going to be taking a trade walking up to do damage to you, which is very, very good. So we're getting a ton of lifesteal, we're getting a ton of off damage, or sorry, off turn damage from here, from here, and even from here. So every single one of these pieces is buffing her strike back, her alert, all of that. So they're all working in unison, giving her a nasty, nasty amount of damage. So of course you can already see, of course we took her Doom Awaken, it gives her stacks of her barrier, and it gives her that Doom Awaken skill. Unfortunately, a very long cooldown, but if you could keep this up for 100% uptime, that would be very, very broken, so I definitely understand it. And then the next skill we have picked here is the Repulsion application. This is her push and pull skill. Basically, in a straight line in front or to the sides or behind you, you can select a little group of three perpendicular tiles to yourself, and you can either pull them towards you two tiles while inflicting movement down, or push them two tiles backwards inflicting movement down. In the new PvP map, there are tons of different places to pull and push enemies off the edge, and so this makes Momo an absolute monster in the new PvP arena, and I'm super, super excited to start abusing this skill. And then lastly, for her damaging skill, I chose to pick the Life Devourer, the 150% nuke that has even more lifesteal on it, because basically the way that I'm trying to build my Momo is I'm going to push and pull people, punish people like that and get the insta-kills, and then I'm going to turn on my alert skill and punish anyone for walking up into the group of my units, and anyone who does choose to walk up and get hit by my alert skill, I'm then going to finish them off with a Life Devourer when it's my turn, fully healing myself back up with all of that lifesteal that I'm stacking. And so yeah, that's basically the entire build that I've chosen for my Momo and why. There are definitely other kinds of builds you can do. You can definitely turn her into just a complete AoE monster with something like this. You can also start stacking on passives if you're not going to be making use of the push skill. So something like this, put a bunch of infection on people, put even more infection on people, and then also still abuse that buff with that alert for anyone that chooses to walk up while you're doing those stacks. And of course, you can always replace something with like a dark ripple if you want to specifically get rid of passive skills or reaction skills. So there's tons of different ways to play Momo, and that is why she's a super, super cool unit in my opinion. So I personally look forward to being able to use all of those different kinds of builds on her. But yeah, for right now, we are definitely going with this uh, this little single target alert based build and, uh, and push based build that I have ready for her for PvP. And so yeah, I hope this little mini guide helped if you also pulled your Momos this week or if you're trying for her, good luck, good luck. And yeah, I have been Dream. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, please stay safe, stay cute, 
Much love. Abu Ayaya.